going to shortly wrap up today's event. I'm going to invite Chitra up onto the stage. Um, she would like to um, make a few remarks and thank yous. And then we're going to have a, a quick chat at the end just to summarise what we took from today. Maybe take some final feedback from you guys. And uh, I'm going to close the event. So over to Chitra. Oh, we're going to sit down and do it. More relaxed. Since it's the end of the event, we can sit down and chat. Fireside chat. And nobody better than an Irish person to have a fireside chat with, right? It's great crack. <laughs> crack, you've got, you've got shit to say it. <laughs> Colin's wondering what all this is about, but, you know, I, I, I turn on my Irish mode uh, sometimes, and, you know, <laughs> great crack. So, first of all, I'd like to say um, some thank yous um, before we start um, sort of wrapping up and reflecting upon uh, today's event. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Bizarre Exam and Essential Business. Are you all still here? Margarita is still here. Well done throughout the whole event. Uh, uh, Chris is here. He had to leave. Um, and Bizarre is Margarita. So thank you very much for being here. Um, a big thank you to our speakers. Obviously, um, some of you, most of you have had to come from far, uh, leaving um, you know, husbands, children, businesses, etc. Thank you all for making the great effort. Um, I think the furthest has been from San Francisco, right? So thank you, Katya, for coming the furthest. But also, uh, whoever's come from Lisbon, you know, uh, uh, appreciate that very much. Without the speakers, we, you know, don't have an event. So uh, that's fantastic. Um, thank you to our beautiful master of ceremony, Olivia Cannon. Thank you so much for agreeing. For agreeing to come back, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a big ask to come back second year as Master of Ceremony, and uh, thank you very much. We might keep you uh, forever and ever. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for the attendees for registering and coming. Uh, you know, for some people it was uh, half a day off or a few hours off, but um, for all of you who are still here, it's a whole day off. Uh, so thank you very much for coming uh, and listening to all the speakers and, you know, asking your questions. Um, and, and do spread the word, you know, the little takeaways you have, because uh, that's the important part, that you spread the word about all the stuff you heard today. A big thank you to the Martinel team, uh, led by Philippe Guiton. Senor Guiton, where are you? And Miss Sima Lodi. Sima, please stand up. Uh, would all the Martinel team please stand up? Thank you, a big thank you to all of you for making a fantastic, uh, a fantastic event and day for us. Thank you all so much for all the details uh, and all the last minute stuff that you had to put up with me. For, you know, I know I'm a difficult person, but um, you know, we, we made it, I think, as close to perfection as possible. So thank you all for you know, everything. Thank you. Um, thank you to the to Kishkaish Tourism. Is Carla still here? Thank you, Carla and Bernardo. Um, Kishkaish Tourism. The Tourism of Kishkaish has supported uh, our events since the beginning, uh, not just with their presence, but also, um, you know, giving us a fantastic dinner the night before the event every year. So thank you very much for your continued support. Um, and as you can see, Kishkaish is an amazing place to be. So. Say that to your friends as well, definitely. Um, and one more point. So at the entrance, I mean, I, I should have mentioned it at the start of, of the day, but I probably missed it because I was ill yesterday. Um, a business we invested in uh, as a family is System of Motion. My sister's startup. She was here at our very first event talking about her startup, and she's still persevering. She's gone to Portland, Oregon to try to take a business further. It's um, a female fashion business. Uh, shirts made from technical uh, fiber, and um, uh, but designed very beautifully. She started with a white shirt, uh, and there are a few more designs now, and she's just launched her latest um, slim fit. So please do look online. Uh, there are discount cards at the entrance, so please take one with you. Uh, and uh, the, the business is called System of Motion because that's what we are, Systems of Motion. 
uh, SOMO for short. So please do pick up a card and um, have a look at the latest infant. It's called Marianne. Okay. So that's uh, my, my little announcement about the system of motion. Um, right. Now, over to Olivia for the start of the reflection. We thought we'd have a little chat. So nothing is planned. We're just going to reflect and, and try to, um, um, you know, I, as I said here, when I walked into the room this morning, I looked up and I saw all of the famous faces of women and men who have led the way for amazing women. I thought, wow, that is some serious company for everybody who's going to stand up today's stage to be in. But having, having had the day and the experience that we've had, I think everybody has earned their place up here. So well done for that. Um, We challenged a couple of times about imposter syndrome today, um, and I, I will be perfectly honest with you, I felt like a complete imposter all day, and some people have said to me over lunch, I read a little bit about you, tell, 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 tell me about you, and I don't ever feel comfortable speaking about myself. Uh, I love to talk about other people, I love to introduce other people, but it's not something that comes very naturally to me. So. Bear with me a moment. I'm only doing this because a couple of people have asked. So my, my story and why I'm here, uh, apart from uh, my, myself and Chitra starting off as, as business colleagues and now our friends, um, I run a small uh, boutique um, PR company specialising in hospitality in Dublin, Ireland. And the Mark Nell Group are one of my clients. So we promote um, the market, the Mark Nell brand, to Irish holiday makers specifically. Um, high-end families to come and stay at a mark now. Um, and sorry, I got to cut in right there. I mean, you have this imposter syndrome. So they grew our business in Salgrish, Irish business in Salgrish, from 0 to 10% uh, of our business. Today comes from Ireland. Thank you. The Irish love, love Portugal. It, it, and when you've got a great product and a great brand, it, it is very, I won't say it's easy, but it makes your life a little bit easier when you're selling something that people genuinely want and need. Um, and then in 2014, I started a parenting website in Ireland. And it started from the need of being fed up reading, um, you know, tick things and people with their heads cut off and had to click into information to find out which Spice Girl was pregnant this week and all of that sort of stuff. And it really frustrated me. So I started a blog um, and it grew with a business partner and it grew and it grew and it grew quite rapidly. Um, and we built it to a stage whereby we were able to successfully exit that business last year and sold it and it's thriving. Um, so it's, it's the key to when you know you can bring a business to a certain stage and then somebody else wants to take it and bring it on to that next level. So it's, it's quite a joy to sit and to see where that business is going today. Um, and I just launched a new business last December with a new, a new partner called Parenting Institute. So we're at a very, very, very early stage. Um, so I've actually been so many notes today and, and to, inspiration to say the least to listen to all of your stories so just when you think you have a den you don't <laughs> you walk into a room and you hear a story that somebody else has to say and um, so that's why i'm here that's that's my uh, i'm out of my imposter syndrome is <laughs> no <laughs> it's on the stage um, it, it was amazing to uh, listen to the women in the room today some of them are moms some of them are not moms um, it is great to hear stories of investment in terms of success for investment, people looking for investment, advice and tips on how to go about getting investment, and um, some fantastic success stories, and um, one amazing failure story, which it, 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 it was epic to listen to it and to, to learn from it. And then the lessons that we have to learn from the successes and the failures. Um, so, a personal thank you for me, just as the same, to say thank you to the people who have shared their stories with us today, but also the lessons that we will take forward into our businesses and hopefully improve as a result of that. And ultimately, isn't that what today was all about? Absolutely. You know, I mean, um, learning from our failures, um, you know, learning from others' failures, learning from other successes. Uh, it was interesting, uh, a part of his story as well about you know, doing your due diligence research, um, you know, whether it be 10 months or a couple of years. Um, we, Robert and myself, are not from the hospitality industry either. Uh, and we also did our research, um, um, you know, of what existed for the family market. Um, 
before we started up uh, our business, but we've brought lots of experts. The team you see, uh, you know, from Philippe, uh, uh, Sima, uh, everyone else, uh, you know, we, today we have 600 staff uh, at our peak, but we were very clear in bringing uh, others who knew what they were doing. It could be Suresh, it could be uh, uh, Philippe, but, you know, we brought in professionals to help us run our business. Uh, but it shouldn't uh, put you off starting a business uh, that you haven't got experience in. I take your point, Serena, completely true. You know, experience is worth a lot. And especially if you're the only person, if you're the sole founder, uh, I think it's good to have that experience, for sure. Um, however, it is also possible uh, uh, you know, to, to, to do something that you're really excited about and interested in and, and um, uh, start something. But I'd just like to touch on the dosa uh, for, for a little bit because, you know, it touches so many. You know, the dosa is from South India where you know, my, my family is from, and it's really difficult to make. You're absolutely right uh, in what you said in your Coca-Cola story. Um, this is why I still don't make dosa. I mean, my mom's tried her best. She's bought the machine. She showed us how. But, you know, it's in her. She, you know, and then she says, I said, fermentation. This story, I, I could do a speech on your mom and fermenting the dosa because that is, you know, it's like, uh, uh, I don't know, making bagels and, and uh, you know, Jewish family. But, Really difficult, really technical, you know. She tells me, no, just put it in the oven at night, you know, uh, uh, overnight, and it'll ferment. Well, oven? Switch on the oven all night? No, 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 just in the oven, you know. <laughs> Basically, you have to leave it in a warm place, not in the fridge, for it to ferment, right? I mean, at home, I'm not talking in a restaurant environment. But the, the technical details of what goes into a dosa, I mean, that's amazing. And it's amazing that you've managed to expand that in Europe, started in Germany and expanded Europe. Because for years, I was hungering for a dosa in Portugal. We never had a single restaurant that would serve dosa. We had lots of North Indian restaurants, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, the chicken tikka masala and all the other things that you spoke about, you know, creamy, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, this, this is, you know, hats off for you to start off, start a dosa restaurant in Germany and then to bring it to Portugal. So really, you know, that's amazing. Um, uh, but it brought up so many stories in, in my mind about the dosa. Sorry. I'm so hungry. I got so wonderful. <laughs> um, the other thing that I enjoyed from today was the diversity of the industries in the room. So a lot of different industries touch. So often when you go to an event, you can be talking about the same industry and you know, obviously different, different topics in that regard a real wide variety of industry and um, everything. Yeah. Industries, because really the lessons have to come from different industries, right? 100%. And also, as I mentioned already, the fact that how so many of the stories were, were so many of the lessons, the cross-referencing between each people's stories um, was, was, was good, so it means that we're all on the same page. Um, you know, uh, some, some hashtags that, you know, uh, I took away, you know, calling versus a passion. It's interesting that you made that difference. Um, but a calling can become a passion. I mean, that's true. Um, money is a powerful tool, but a pearl master. How important is that lesson? Um, you know, obviously, a business has to succeed. You have to monetize it. You have to make money. Uh, but that's not the only reason we're doing it, obviously, and it never can be. Uh, there was uh, an entrepreneur from India I went to, uh, to uh, I heard speak uh, at an event in Singapore a long time ago, and he said, you know, if you come up with a good product and you really, you know, uh, make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons, don't worry, the money will come, you know, <laughs> and this is the point you're trying to make, don't make it your master. Um, imposter syndrome. Hashtag, my, uh, it's my Sunday syndrome. I'm the most depressed. I, I feel useless on a Sunday evening. And Roman knows this after, uh, you know, years of being married to me. He says, what you need is sleep. Just go and rest. Because my weekends are actually busy. I haven't had any rest. And he's like, you know. And actually, it goes back to my Sunday evening before school starts on Monday, I think. <laughs> so, you know, um, we all have our downs. And that's the important thing. We're not... Uh, Imposters all the time. Are we? We're not imposters all the time. And that how we need to 
Yeah, we, need, we do need to make a promise to ourselves that yes. we're going to stop. <laughs> and rest. Yes, and rest. And, 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 and start believing. Yeah. Um, I am going to... Oh, oh, I'm just, I have this. Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry. Um, so, I think that this point about... Um, I mean, Jenny's talk about failure was, was an interesting one. You know, we have had uh, businesses uh, that we started before a couple uh, to varying levels, you know, where we had put a business plan together and we haven't succeeded. But we have had failures before, whether it was because of Brexit or timing or, you know, I mean, the timing, I'm very sorry to hear about the, the failure because of Brexit because literally a couple of years before that, and, you know, it would have taken off and, um, and, and still the press never reports all the things that are not working out because of Brexit. It's really terrible. I, I feel really sorry um, uh, about that. But fear of failure is what keeps us going sometimes, but it's really important to, to face uh, when a business is not working and shut it down. Um, we don't have the answer for that, obviously, as we have heard. I don't know what the answer is, but, um, you know, it's, it's a very important lesson. Um, I definitely would like to mention, we heard today uh, coming to Portugal and investing in Portugal, we heard it twice today, and actually I uh, sit on a uh, foreign direct investment task force that was specially set up in the wave of Brexit, unfortunately, uh, to bring more foreign direct investment into Portugal. While I'm really disappointed about Brexit, um, uh, we have been entrepreneurs here uh, for 18 years now, and as entrepreneurs who have seen the country grow and develop over 20 years. Part of my job, my pro bono work, is to tell you all what a great place Portugal is to invest. So if you're thinking of expanding your business to Europe, come to Portugal. It's a good place to live. Uh, it's one of the most open, tolerant, liberal societies I have ever lived in. And you heard that from Aparna, from Taya, uh, and it's true, it's authentic. So uh, João was here until a moment ago. He had to leave, unfortunately. Uh, who is uh, my colleague on uh, the Portugal Inn team. So, um, sorry, I had to get my word from our sponsors. I mean, they're not our sponsors, Portugal, but, you know, we're very thankful and grateful uh, uh, that the Portuguese people have invited us with open arms uh, to live here and work here. So thank you, Portugal, for sure. I think that deserves an applause. I would like to say thank you to you and to Roman, um, and you've already thanked all of your team at Martignal, but today's event would not have been possible without Chitra and really kind of pivoting the event from what it was last year to this year's event. So I think the stance that we've taken for this year's event has been wonderful, and it will be great to make it happen again next year. Fingers crossed. Um, so personal, a, a personal thanks for that. I think the decision that you made to bring the whole entrepreneurship and women in tech and women in business in to tell their stories so that how there would be invited guests in to learn from today. My hope would that be that how next year there's 250 people in the room and the year after that there will be 500 people in the room. And who knows, we might even head down to the, uh, the convention center in town someday. <laughs> we'll bring it to Dublin. When we'll it came here, we're going to Dublin. Yeah, we're, hey, we're, we're not over that yet. We're not over that yet. <laughs> No, thank you so You're much. Very That's very welcome. kind. That's very, very kind. Uh, we do it with pleasure and passion. Uh, and I think um, the pivoting was almost an easy uh, decision. Um, you know, the first couple of years, what we did was we focused on, um, you know, luxury brands created in the family space. Uh, and, you know, we balanced the, the founders, men and women, talking about creating the businesses. And, you know, they were all, all very inspiring stories. Um, but... You know, uh, uh, Portugal uh, uh, has a thriving startup scene, as, as you know, Olivia pointed out earlier, and it is a topic that we're all discussing quite a lot. Uh, you know, Rita and I actually first met uh, at such an event, um, and this year's Web Summit had uh, a focus on, on female founders raising money. So, you know, uh, the timing was perfect for me to do this, and. Um, so, you know, we're very happy and we thank you all for, for um, feeling that it's, it's a good privilege. And let's see next year. It might be uh, all men talking about female startups. Who knows? Let's see how, how, how we pivot for next year, right? Already sold out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll 
we'll see how we put for next year. Uh, further takeaways, digital transformation or any transformation is difficult, be persistent, kill the project if necessary, uh, you know, but you know, be persistent, give it enough time to develop. Uh, late bloomers, it's never too late to start a business, but we've heard that definitely in other case studies too, so uh, a nice takeaway. Um, yes, experience counts, yes and no. Uh, just know how to complement yourself uh, in your team where you don't have the experience. Um, <laughs> yes, family business is carrying each other through the hard times. Uh, you know, well, that's what I, I have said in the past in my speeches too, uh, that uh, Ruben and I complement each other uh, very well. Uh, when I'm down, you know, he's lifting me up and, and vice versa. Very important in my opinion, which is very difficult as a sole founder. And my heart goes out to anyone who is a sole founder uh, because, you know, you, you have to face the down times. And it's extremely difficult when you're facing that Sunday evening or Monday evening or whatever <laughs> it is when you're exhausted. And it's not easy to take rest. I mean, I know it's easy to say, yeah, you know, you took after, need to look after your health. Um, I had to face this, uh, you know, at 45 when, uh, you know, I had to teach myself how to run uh, because, uh, you know, my, my health was going downhill. So, uh, and no rest for several years, four children and, uh, you know, uh, growing a business. But uh, having, having a co-founder helps. Um, ask for help. Ask for help. Ask for help when you need it, whether it's friends, family. Uh, mentors, whoever it is, very important to ask other people for help. Um, you know, uh, I, I like the way, you know, the Indians, uh, we bring our mothers into the story. The Portuguese are the same, by the way. Very, very important. I mean, if it hadn't been for my mom, I can safely say I would have collapsed years ago. Because she came whenever I needed her. I'd be like, emergency call, please help me. I'm having a very tough time, you know, uh, uh, need your help for, um, yeah. They were babies. I had three kids under the age of four, you know, uh, in the first few years. You think it's a weakness to ask for help. And actually, it's probably the strongest thing that you can do is to ask for help. The Irish people are yeah. very obliging. Of, they, you know, they, they, they believe in you. They're very obliging with the time to ask for it. They're only too happy to help. Yes. Unless you're an expertise or support or time. There's someone who spoke to me, uh, a founder of uh, the Irish, um, an Irish parenting site. Um, you'll, you'll remember her name, and she said, um, I was stuck in London without my Irish mummy. Um, and she, she spoke about why she, what was her inspiration to start this website. And, you know, sometimes we need our mothers, parents, sisters, brothers, you know, ask for the help. Or your tribe. Yeah. Or, yeah. So sometimes, you're not, sometimes you're not fortunate enough to have yeah. family around you. So support yourself with the um, with friends that you can get to, you can trust. So, any, do you, uh, you have anything more? Any questions uh, about the wrap up or any burning questions? Is there a burning question from anybody in the room that they didn't get to ask today? Charlie, 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 Charlie go on. It can't be what time does the bar open? <laughs> There's that. And also, what is your vision for the Martin Hall? Very deep question. <laughs> so, uh, part of our vision is being realized on the other side of uh, Lisbon. Um, you know, we have our fifth market uh, being built, uh, and we're moving into education as well, um, uh, education hub. For Martignol itself, uh, the next step really should be uh, expanding our city center concept. So we started Chiado. Uh, we opened Chiado in 2016, December. Um, have you been to, to the Chiado? So we have another hotel in Lisbon, in the center of Lisbon, uh, called Martignal Chiado. And we opened that in response to um, families who travel to cities. There's an increasing number of families who want to travel to cities and uh, you know, experience the cities through the eyes of the children as well as themselves. Um, but it is impossible to find hotels that really cater to this, especially if you have four kids. I mean, you know. You can sort of manage with one, maybe with two, the minute they grow older. Uh, hotels can't guarantee interconnecting rooms, which I understand. You know, that's how they work, especially the large hotels. Um, and, and then the rest of the experience as well. They don't really understand uh, uh, what you need. They can organize babysitting, but it's from some random person, usually. 
uh, or someone from outside the hotel. Um, and, uh, you know, when you need to wind down with them, uh, it's a hotel room, uh, not something uh, relaxing, you know, you're stuck in a hotel room. And the reason you and your husband or you and your wife or you and your partner want to go to that city is also to enjoy the evening, going to a Michelin star restaurant or um, a show, a Broadway show in New York or, um, you know, catching a concert at the Alti Serena here in, in Lisbon. And you can't usually do that. So Chiado has um, a kids club in the middle, for, uh, segmented into different ages. Uh, and we have uh, uh, an evening club, a pajama club, where we look after your children when you are able to go to a show or uh, one of Lisbon's fantastic restaurants that's opening up. The restaurant scene is really buzzing here. Uh, Aparna is right. Um, and, and we've really thought through the whole day. So, you know, it usually starts in the morning. You want to take your kids out, see a little bit of the city, visit maybe uh, children-friendly um, uh, sites like the Oceanarium. Uh, and then you want to come back because the buzz of the new city is quite a lot for, for the, the baby, child. Come back, you want to eat something, wind down a little bit, whether it's in your room or in the kids' club, uh, while one partner might decide to go shopping or... You know, both of you might start to do something. Uh, and then early dinner, uh, depending on which country you're from. <laughs> and, um, and then you can leave the children with us, with, you know, uh, qualified staff and, and people that you're seeing day in, day out in, in our um, hotel, and go out for, for an evening. So that is what we think uh, can be replicated uh, in other parts of the world. And we are looking at this. Let's see. Uh, inshallah, uh, God willing, and funding needs to come our way too. And we need to also have the time. I mean, time uh, is, a, is an extremely um, scarce resource uh, when you're expanding a business. Um, so let's see. But that would be uh, a nice future of the Mark Nell brand to go beyond the shores of Portugal. So, sorry. Yes, we have a cocktail outside. So, we have a cocktail outside. I'd like to invite all of you to the cocktail. Um, uh, thank you all very, very much for coming to the event. I mean, one thing is inviting, you know, having an event and inviting people to come and, and uh, you know, uh, getting people to register. But another thing is having the fullest house we've had to date. Um, you know, it's fantastic. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. See you outside. <laughs>